six games, they're averaging six, 15 made threes. On the other side, no C.J. Bryce. Last year against Notre Dame, he had 23, five for five from the three. Without Bryce, they need Markel Johnson to step up and dominate this game. Attack off the bounce, get in the lane, and more importantly, pressure the ball on the perimeter so that that North Carolina State can run Notre Dame off the three-point line. NC State and Notre Dame with shorter rosters than they'd like right now. Rotations going maybe eight deep. And the opening tip won by the freshman Nanny Bates. It's into the hands of Markel Johnson. Kevin Keats with his starting lineup has all three guards that he's got right now in the lineup along with Jericho Helms and Manny Bates in the front court. NC State needs to get Braxton Beverly going. He has struggled shooting the basketball the last three games. He can make some shots and will open up driving lanes. Helms pass not intended for Beverly. He ends up with a three that goes wide. And no surprise, there's John Mooney for his first rebound. He is a relentless rebounder on both ends. He pursues the basketball on every shot. You see a lot of three-point shooting today from Notre Dame. They take about 46% of their shots from three-point range. Third highest among major conference teams. And as we talk about shorter rosters today, Notre Dame is without Rex Fluger, who's battling a knee injury, a bone bruise on his left knee. Nothing structurally wrong with him because he's had the ACL injury with that knee before. They hope to have him back on Saturday. He's an incredible young man. He's a terrific leader. He's got a toughness about him. Although he's not playing, he's going to try to be involved in this game and help coach this team from the sidelines through his experiences. Yeah, not a big score. About five points a game for his career. But his leadership and his ability to distribute are missed on the court for at least tonight's game. You're going to see both of these teams play four round one. Four perimeter players, one post player, try to open up the floor, use the three-point line as spacing. Mooney, a disruptor there on the lob for Bates. High, low, and close proximity between Durham and Mooney, and a second chance opportunity for Mooney, the senior from Orlando. Bates doing a great job contesting that first shot, one of the leading shot blockers in all of college basketball. If you're going to bring it to him, you better bring it into his body. Mike Bray, the winningest coach in Notre Dame in his basketball history. He's got his team, Seth, playing faster than they have over the last several years, which started back at about six weeks to go in last season. Yeah, they're 66 and have the length of possession. Think about the last three years, 298, 303, and 282. They actually practiced with a 20-second clock. He wants to play ahead of the defense. That swirls around and in for Jericho Hellums. Helms needs to be aggressive offensively in the Clemson game. He had nine early points and kind of disappeared. They need his shot making. They need his versatility. Good win. Pull up from 13. Front rims it. Rebound. Ping Kong's out for TJ Gibbs with a floater. Gibbs, the senior, really has a good feel for the game. Terrific passer. Takes care of the basketball. Sees plays. He needs to knock down threes, which he's shooting at a high level. And he needs to also get into the paint. Helms likes his speed against Mooney's size, and he's got all five for NC State. And that's really good offensive possession with good spacing. And more importantly, you're making John Mooney defend. Go at him, make him defend, maybe get him in foul trouble. That's the best way to keep him off the glass. Mooney, not your average big man, though. A little bit more of a challenge to guard for the forwards for NC State. We'll shoot the three from time to time. Goodwin let it go, and it was off of his leg. NC State ball. A little pick and pop. Mooney closes out late. Watch Hellum drive the top leg. Good jump stop, good power move, good finish. Really good spacing and execution by NC State. Hellumson scored. And they played Wisconsin, the Big Ten ACC Challenge last month. Dropped in 23. Helms is really skilled to play high school basketball with Jason Tatum. That's a pretty good pair to defend. There's the lob from Johnson to Manny Bates. Markel Johnson, he needs to play like a senior. Markel Johnson needs to play like last year's Markel Johnson. Right now, this is a must-win game to defend your home court. He's got to be aggressive on both ends. 
Goodwin gets a wide open look from three. NC State cannot give up step in threes. They've got to pressure the ball because ball pressure buys time and close out and make an Notre Dame drivers. You can't give up step in threes. Goodwin's going to knock that down. Contested three. Markel Johnson off to a great start for the Wolfpack. Sigh of relief for Kevin Keats because Markel Johnson has not shot the ball well this year after shooting his 40%. That's Hub from the corner. Back-to-back -back threes from right in front of the Wolfpack bench. That's two possessions in a row on the skip pass, late closeout, step in threes. Kevin Keats told us in our meeting today the most important thing is pressure on the ball and run Notre Dame off the three-point line, make him drive us. A Moody block leads to a Gibbs run-out lay-in. Wow, he has defended the rim with ferocity so far. Carolina State's really struggling with defensive transition this year. Giving up 17 points a game in transition. Floor balance is really important for them. John Moody sparking the offense. And when we come back, Seth gives some. This dude is the best rebounder in college basketball, barring none. That dude can flat rebound, and he pursues the ball. Pat Riley used to say, you got to get up in the air to be rebound the basketball. He gets up in the air and pursues the ball every single shot. Goodwin beats the defense down the floor in a nifty reverse to get a pair. 14-10, Notre Dame. And that's just unacceptable. Defensive transition on a hit head, an advance pass. You've got to get back, set your defense. You can't do that. You cannot defend on the man. Couple personnel changes. NC State brings Funderburg, 12 points a game off the bench. And Pat Andre into the game, a great three point shooter. He's and playing for the wrong team. <laughs> Nate Lyshevsky into the game as well for Notre Dame. Funderburg gives him a little bit more interior strength. And as it pertains to John Moody, there is Johnson. Takes a tumble and turns it over. Mike Bray said of John Mooney on his radio show last week, you know, a lot of credit goes to Ryan Humphrey, the assistant who played at Notre Dame and had a long professional career. Talked to him at practice, he goes, he takes none of the credit. He goes, it's all on Mooney. This is a guy who works harder than anybody I've ever coached. I'm blown away by one thing right now. John Mooney's a great rebounder. But what do you do listening to Mike Bray's radio show? Who listens to a college coach's <laughs> radio show? Says the guy who is chastising himself for going over baseline out of bounds plays. <laughs> that's a big time three right there by Prince Up. When they play faster, they're more freed up, and that's exactly why Mike Bray is playing faster. By the way, if, if you're going to listen to something, you should listen to the world's greatest podcast with Greenberg and Dockage. Courtside. Had a great interview with Tom Green this week. Clearly, I've got enough time on my schedule to do both. Exactly. We'll talk about that later. Johnson puts it up, and Funderburg got caught with Goodwin underneath him. So the foul goes on Goodwin. That's the first on the sophomore from the greater Columbus, Ohio area. Man, he's playing well right now. In the last five or six games, shooting the ball, seeing a big basket. He was coming off the bench prior to Rex Fluger getting injured. Now he's back in the starting lineup. But coming off the bench, he's averaging 11 points a game. Look what he's done right now, Funderburg. Funderburg's been really good these last four games. They need his interior scoring and presence. Yeah, he and Goodwin coming off the bench for their teams, although, as you said, it has changed with Fluger sitting out today, and they hope today will be the last of those games he sits out. But averaging a dozen points, they're among five major conference players each, Funderburg and Goodwin, to average at least 11 without starting a game. Both come in with a green light. Both, they need them to make shots, make plays. They're very big part of their teams. Braxton Beverly's just got to make a shot. He is aiming the ball right now. He cannot be afraid to miss a shot. Thunderbird fearlessly delivers that one to pull the pack back within three. Fearlessly? I thought it was a heck of a pass by Mark L. Johnson. You have to be so fearless. Well, when there's no defender in the way, it's pretty easy. I like it. Fearless is you having to show up and work with me. <laughs> no one's disputing that. <laughs> Ten to shoot here for Notre Dame. Up can pull from just about anywhere. Oh, what a pass to Durham, who's fouled by Funderburg on his way to the rim. Hub had that gathered and just dropped it into the lane. Talk about dribble penetration and the benefits of dribble penetration. Draw a second defender, eyes on the rim, dump it down. 
Fun to Burke with the finish. Markel Johnson's ability to get paint touches, draw a second defender and make plays, that is the best of Markel Johnson. It's to take care of the ball, attack the paint, be on balance, and make a play. Notre Dame's got to clean, I mean, excuse me, NC State must clean up their ball screen defense. Clemson really hurt them in ball screen situations the other day. And once again, they're struggling on the backside, getting help in their ball screen defense. We sat and we watched their practice this afternoon for about an hour as they went through mostly ball screen defense. How did you feel like they did in that time span? It was great, but they were playing against the second team. They were going about 75%. Ball screen defense is about recovery. It's about high hands, so you're disrupting the pass, changing the passing angle as they fill out. They've got to improve in that area. Markel Johnson feeling it right now. Kevin Keats was talking about him today when we visited him. He said he thought Markel had two really good days of practice. You practice well, your investment equals your expectation. He made that investment. He's playing really well right now. And Seth, you've got a, a high meter for malarkey, as some might say. I don't I'm always... full of a lot of malarkey. <laughs> your self-awareness is at an all-time high. I don't always buy into when a coach says, oh, well, a guy had a great couple of days of practice, because you hear that more often than you don't. But for Markel Johnson, to have him have this start after his first basket came 15 minutes into the game against Clemson, you see something different. Let me ask you something, big boy. All right. I'm ready. If a guy said, boy, I'll tell you one thing, Markel Johnson, he has not practiced worth a bleep. How would that make you feel? Probably not too confident well, not, on Markel Johnson. I'm not Markel Johnson. I wouldn't feel anything. Well, you'd be ready to go no matter what, because you're more organized than crime. But I mean, like, as a coach, you need your leader, your senior. If they're going to win this game, Markel Johnson's got to be good. For Markel Johnson to be good, he's got to invest. To me, settling maybe for that three early in the clock, that's the best thing, but he's got to be aggressive. He's got to be, he's got to play well. With C.J. Bryce out, he needs to play well. Gibbs just drove right by him. And nice play by Gibbs. I think Kevin Keats would rather give up that two, contest the two in the lane, than give up a late closeout open three. For a Notre Dame team that's over the last five games shot 41%. Quick try for Andre. And a one-shot possession. Mooney got ahead of the field. Loose ball. And it's picked up by Johnson. Now numbers for the Wolfpack. Can Johnson find the open teammate? Really good defensive transition right there by Francis up, keeping the ball in front. How about the way Mooney pursue, pursues the ball? And that ball goes up, and he's attacking the basketball. Kind of like he did the nachos today. The guac was unstoppable. So was I. I was going to the dish. <laughs> Durham hit on the way up. Having the size advantage in South Carolina. This is the beast of the East. Pelicans, Knicks, Lakers, Mavs, Friday on ESPN. Ball for all. Skills, he's a terrific teacher. He connects with people. Guys want to play for him. He had an incredible program there. I think they had seven players that played at Hargate Military Academy that played for me at Virginia Tech. Better person than he is a coach, and he is a terrific basketball coach. What was it about the players that he coached at the prep level that made you want them on the college team? Well, they were held accountable. Uh, they were not enabled. He coached them hard every single day, but he loved them to death. He made sure he did the right things on the court, off the court. They were in a uniform and marching every single day at Hargrave. It's not easy. When they came to us, they were ready to compete in the ACC. Along with Seth Greenberg, Mike Cousins, glad you're with us tonight here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Conference game number four of the season, both for Notre Dame and for NC State. Equal marks of one and two in the ACC. That's the fourth turnover for Notre Dame. That's a high number for them only having about nine and a half turnovers a game. They got to run the ball to their hands. The active hands of NC State is very important. Manny Bates on the backside. The lob has been there for the Wolfpack in the early going as Funderburg has to sit with two fouls. So a lot placed on the shoulders of Bates. That last possession, Bates gets behind the defense. Good vision by Markel Johnson. See the pressure on the ball right now. Pushing Notre Dame out a little bit. Look for him to drive That matchup right here. Size advantage for Mooney, and he splashes it through. John Mooney, last game, as they defeated Syracuse in Central New York. Had his 11th double-double of the season. 28 points, 14 rebounds. 
11 double doubles this year in 13 games. He did miss one and his eighth consecutive double double. The pressure on the basketball is so important. Really nice. Good penetration. Gives Notre Dame a chance to get to the offensive glass. And to stay good push right here. And a stop at the rim. See, this is the difference in Notre Dame right now. They are playing fast, but they're looking to push in transition, play ahead of the defense, which gives them more freedom and lets them play more on instinct. And the biggest guy that's benefited from this, practice Hub. He's three for three from three-point range. Hub is healthy this year. He's more relaxed. He knows where his shots are coming from and is much more assertive. Moody, yet another rebound. This is a team that returned a lot of familiar faces this year. They did have some turnover. Chris Doherty left the team in December. DJ Harvey transferred in May. But a lot of guys who saw a lot of minutes last year in a crucial class for them is the sophomore class, which includes Prentice Hub, who's got the ball right now. The best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. Not every freshman's just going to turn into Zion overnight. There is a process that it takes to get to be able to be a competitive player at this level. These guys have gone through that process. Hub sends it back for Gibbs, who's fouled on the way up by Jericho Hellums. Pace of play for Notre Dame, a decided factor in the first half. Things that take discipline. Yeah, discipline, like good defense. One of the things, fouling negates hustle. They don't foul, they keep you in front, they can test shots and limit you to one shot. So they don't turn it over. And more importantly, they make the extra pass. They play for each other, they share the ball. They have a good, better, best mentality. Give up a good shot to get a better shot to get the best shot. They're a terrific passing team. And it's Gibbs at the free throw line here. He took the bump from Jericho Hellums right before the break. A foul on Hellums, Beverly, and Thunderbird is tethered to the bench right now for NC State with two early fouls hurting them in the front court. How do you get tethered to the bench? How do you get tethered to the bench? Well, we've got 20 minutes at halftime, and I will introduce you to the concepts of metaphor, simile, and other rhetorical devices. I appreciate devices. that. That's It'll good. be fun. That's Syracuse education. Seth Greenberg, lifelong I went to, to Fairly Dickinson, Harvard on the Hackensack. I, you know, I, I didn't agree when I graduated that big time fancy communication school. <laughs> Just a small school in Central New York. Into the post here for Danny Dixon. And when they've got foul trouble in the front court, that's where he sees some time. Andre not able to connect just yet. And a foul as Leshesky hits the deck. You know, big Nate right there. That was a big time rebound. He is an elite shooter. He hasn't shot it great thus far this season, but he's doing other things. He's defending, and more importantly, he's putting his nose in there and rebounding the basketball. He's going to make shots, but he's while he's struggling shooting the basketball, he's doing other things to help the team. Well, look at that. Where did he get that? Oh, shirt? look at that. <laughs> Seth Greenberg basketball camp. He came to training camp. Came to four weeks of camp. Avon, Connecticut, where he was a young fella. And uh, what a great kid, what a great family. His dad played at Wisconsin. His sister does, too. She's a junior there, Abby. Yeah, played volleyball with my daughter, Jackie. I should say senior. Thank you, Paula. Did you, uh, you peg the Division I talent then? He was a Division I <laughs> shooter at a very young age. Now, that wasn't the same shirt he wore at camp because he was obviously just a small little fella back in the day, but I'm really proud of him. The kid really has a good feel, can really shoot the ball, high basketball IQ, uh, and he's learning how to compete. Like that rebound he had a second ago, that's a traffic rebound that he put himself in position to rebound the ball. Playing with a guy like John Mooney is really good for him because he's learning to do other things. One of the things they both do well is go for a loose ball with two hands. Gotta go with two hands. 6.25 first half, Notre Dame by seven. Mooney works his way to the rim, and the southpaw tries just wide. Nice job, Daniels, holding his spot, rolling up, keeping Mooney in front, playing with some high hands. Well, Seth, a slow start today for the Wolfpack with this early deficit. Markel Johnson gets yet another three-pointer. Quite a start for him as he's three for four from deep. But they come off that Saturday loss at Clemson where they lost 81 to 70. It was the first game all year where they trailed for the entire game. They had a hard time turning Clemson over. They only had three steals. Part of that game, they were forcing nine steals a game. They just didn't disrupt Clemson. Clemson went small. Amir Sibbs, a hard matchup, because he's a five guy that can handle the ball like a guard. 
Clemson. That's a tough shot. Hand in the face, and Markell almost made it work. So that's a play where they can get that thing changed side to side and you can get it back and draw it. Another transition bucket. You can't win a game in this league if you cannot stop the basketball in transition. You've got to stop the ball, corral the basketball, keep it in front, and then close out on the pass. A little one three one zone. Now watch what happens when this goes to the corner. If it comes out of the corner, they'll end up in a 2-3 zone right here. Boom, now they're in a the 2-3. It just rotates over. And Braxton Beverly, who dribbled out of that corner, haven't seen much from him, only two shot attempts so far. Tomorrow, we'll take you to the Pac-12. Top 25 matchup, number nine, Oregon, and number 24, Arizona, in Eugene. Nine Eastern and six Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Two of the better guards, not only in that league you'll see, but also in the country. Yeah, man, and Nico, man, he's really, really good off the bounce. Terrific vision, gets in the lane for Arizona. Peyton Pritchard might be the toughest guard in America. He's a physical point guard that gets in the lane, plays to contact, terrific leader. Oregon is final four, good. They're hard to play against, and uh, to me, and probably Dante, the big kid that they just got eligible, changes them So, Prentice Hub hits the three to make the lead nine for Notre Dame. We're going to do a package eventually in defensive transition because Prentice Hub came down in transition. You've got to stop the basketball. They don't even knock down the three. Johnson floats it and drops it through. By the way, Arizona getting 46 points a game from freshmen. Ooh, those guys are good. Fourth highest total in the country, but two of the schools who are ahead of them are in this league, Virginia Tech and Duke. Yeah, not the Vernon Carrick you talk about Duke right now. Duke is a blip to Stephen F. Austin away from being the team we said we don't have a college basketball today, a dominant team. They're defending, they've got an elite point guard, obviously Trey Jones, and Vernon Carey is a load in the low block. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by One A Day. I know you guys are liking this game because you two guys never saw a shot you didn't like and had very few assists in your career. John Moody is a terrific basketball player, not just a rebounder. He's a winning player. He's got toughness. I think we need to get him on the wooden award list. But I'm going to tell you guys something even more important. There was a guy at this timeout that just came out to center court, kind of about 5'8". I couldn't tell what he was. He was wearing a sweatshirt. All of a sudden, my man cousin goes, oh, that's Hayden Hadley. I said, who's Hayden Hadley? He's a wrestler. How would you know as we're calling this basketball game, some 5'8 guy that rolls out to center court is Hayden Hadley, a great wrestler at, at NC State? How dare you call yourself a fan of ACC sports and you can't recognize a two-time All-American up there with Nick Gwizdowski as one of NC State's best wrestlers ever. Pat Papalizio, great head coach for this NC State Wolfpack wrestling program. Well, I know Cuff knows that because he's like a host in the <laughs> studio for like every sport other than <laughs> basketball. So I'm sure he's right on top of the wrestling situation. Farnham, he knows water pole. The guy's a UCLA guy. <laughs> Can we get back to the game? Yes, my uh, cousin Seth Jack. Greenberg, 245 before the half. And we'll hear lots more from Kevin Dallin and Sean. One and two teams in the ACC. Notre Dame with a win against Syracuse. NC State with a win against Wake Forest. There is work to do in a season of surprises. John Moody, you get it on the block. He's better on the left block. Look at his patience. And he finishes right there using the rim. He said in that rebounding segment, he's not the greatest athlete. So if you're not a great athlete and you go up, take it to the other side of the rim, use the rim to protect the shot block. He's already got six points, nine rebounds, well on his way to double-double number 12 in 14 games this year. Nine rebounds, that was my career. <laughs> Everything's with two hands. He catches with two hands. He passes with two hands. He pursues rebounds. Great penetration. Bad closeout. What? There wasn't a closeout. That's why we banned. Nobody pursued. Good observation. You know Hadley, and you know there was no closeout. Johnson with a hand in his face. Too quick. Daniels contested. And it's tipped by Bates off the backboard. Shot clock resets to 20 for the Wolfpack, down by seven. They've got to move the ball side to side right now. The ball's getting stuck. Make one extra pass. A little 2-3 zone right here. They got Bates behind the defense area. That was big right there. The two-point try is good for Braxton Beverly. 
Braxton Beverly needed to see the ball go in. I thought I'd get a little fist pump out of him. That is huge. You can hear the way this crowd reacted to that. Shot fake, pull up, terrific job right there. Now you make a shot, all of a sudden defensively, you get a little more energized, a little bit further pressure on the basket. Beverly and Goodwin were fighting for position. You could have called a foul either way there in the post. And this foul is an offensive foul against Notre Dame as Hub drove right down the lane. I always say that your defense is connected to your offense. Think about this, Braxton Beverly knocks down the jumper. Who then steps up and takes the charge? Braxton Beverly. You make a shot, you feel better about yourself, you're more energized, you saw better ball pressure on this end. They force the drive, they're in help, they step up and take the charge. That was a huge play for Braxton Beverly. And he sends Hub to the bench for the rest of the half, 70 seconds. Picking up his second foul. Notre Dame without a real backup point guard. TJ Gibbs will have to handle the basketball. They do it by committee. This zone right now, look to see if they can get something inside out. Really good pass right there. That one's trying to go against Durham, and his long arms went out on defense. The ball comes into the middle of the zone. If you don't have a scoring opportunity, you got to redirect that thing quickly. Nice job matching up by Notre Dame. Gibbs with a foul on his way to the basket. With him, even at point guard, it's great. He's got the fourth assist to turnover ratio in the ACC, fourth best at three to one. They don't turn the basketball over because they can do things by committee. And the one thing about Gibbs right now, he's been aggressive offensively. So when things break down and all of a sudden NC State is up and into Notre Dame, what he can do, he can kind of make a play. Gibbs and Hunt have been absolutely terrific the last five games. Now look at their numbers, look at their three-point percentages, and more importantly, the assists. So when you have a backcourt, you can make a shot, get in the lane, and then make the right scoring play and score it, you've got a dynamic backcourt. That's what this backcourt is going to look like. And when they're shooting threes as well as they are, Gibbs at 41%, Hub at 37 We told you right at the beginning of the show tonight, they've made about 15 threes a game as of late. The average ACC team this year has made seven a game. That's Twice good, huh? as good. That's pretty good. You got the Lakers and the Maverick. That could be the Western Conference Finals. Luka Doncic is absolutely incredible. His feel for the game, his size, his strength, that team is really connected. They're defending better. Coming out, back out in this one through one Notre Dame right here. Watch when the ball goes to the baseline. If it gets to the baseline, once it gets to the baseline, they throw out, it'll convert to a 2-3 zone. Everly to the basket and scores. And some bad news for the Wolfpack just moments ago. We saw Markel Johnson going off to the locker room. Notre Dame's going to call timeout here and stop the clock with 6.6 .6 before the half. You're a one three one zone. you got to keep the ball in front of you right there. Beverly got a split. You cannot get split. When you're in a one three one zone, that point and that wing, they've got to put you in a soft trap. Beverly did a nice job of getting in the lane and finishing. Those two baskets by Beverly are huge for NC State. His ability to make shots and see the ball go in could carry over to the second half. Now, you never, as a head coach, had any qualms with the media or the way your team was perceived. So I'm, I'm not going to ask this question. Oh, yeah, I did. No, never. I, and never. here's the deal. We all listen to it. We all read it. We all say, oh, I don't read the newspaper. I don't look at the internet. Yeah, OK, sure. Tell me, tell me something else. Well, the students behind us don't read the newspaper. We know that for a fact. They love to be here. <laughs> Kevin Keats said, look, when this team was without C.J. Bryce and they lost to Clemson, the reaction was a little bit different than when North Carolina, as of late, loses a game. The immediate instinct for many is to say, oh, well, they don't have Cole Anthony. But he said, it doesn't seem like NC State got that same benefit of the doubt without their leading scorer and rebound. Yeah, and then you think about North Carolina, they lost at home to Georgia Tech. You know, NC State lost on the road to Clemson. We're going to get into that later because I was really shocked what Coach Williams said. We don't have enough time to dig into that topic. But we all know that this is not a normal North Carolina team. We can see that. We can address that. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting situation moving forward. And also how that conversation impacts Cole Anthony moving forward. We will touch back on the second half on that conversation. Booney to the basket, and his shot is no good. So at the half, the lead is five for Notre Dame. 
Cubs led by as many as nine in the first half. Mooney well on his way to a double-double. Six points, nine rebounds. And we saw Markel Johnson off to the locker room. More on that when we come back. But now we go to the studio. Kevin, Sean, and Notre Dame has shot it well. They get almost half of their points from three-point range. Third highest among major conference teams in five of seven to start. Including a nice start from Prentice Hub, who controls here, has been key to their lead. They've got to keep Hub out of the lane. They've got to set their defense in transition and stop the ball a little higher. And then offensively, they've got to do a better job now of getting the ball moved side to side. And it's the, the ball got stuck a little bit towards the end of that first half. Same starters for both teams that began the game here in the second half as well. Booty now with eight points to match his nine rebounds. And he's so patient around the basket, right? Like his ability to move his man on the bounce and then take the ball to the other side of the rim and use that rim as a protector against the shot blocker like Manny Bates. So questionable equals yes for Markel Johnson. It went off holding the back. He kicks it out. Devin Daniels. Front rims it, and it's tipped out of bounds by Helms, who belongs to Notre Dame. Right now, NC State needs some energy. When Marco Johnson went out. He's back. They need some type of energy. They need to create a turnover, get in transition, get an easy bucket. They're extending their defense right now. The big thing right now, they extend their defense. Look for Notre Dame to throw over the top, and if they throw over the top, you've got to close out to those shooters. Yeah, it's an impossibly hard team to turn over. They do it about nine and a half times a game on average which is best in the country and that's where mike bray's team has been his top 10 into the last five years they're a terrific pass and catch team they pass with two catch with two they play with good space but practice up might be the most improved player in the country the confidence he's playing with right now his ability to make plays get in the lane finish knock down the three marco johnson's out there but he does not have a burst to his game right now. No, he looks like he's playing at about 60% of his regular speed of which he's capable. Thought about the three, takes it. And rebound snatched away from Mooney. But the pass errant by Daniels. Hub steps through the lane and goes off glass for two. Kevin Keats needs a quick timeout. Largest lead in the first half was nine for Notre Dame. They've now given themselves a new large advantage at 11. Practice up was absolutely terrific. Watch a little jump stop, split, finish, hop. Stop. Trouble might break coming up the timeout, extending his defense, basically slowing NC State down. NC State needs to try to find something in the paint off of penetration. Well, they've got Thunderbird back in the second half, which is a big boost for them on the interior. He played fewer than five minutes in the first half. They got to get Andre to hit a shot, though, from deep. Some shooters on the floor right now with Johnson and Beverly and Andre, but the foul is against NC State, and it's back to Notre Dame. Yeah, I think NC State's got to extend their defense right now. They've got to muck this game up a little bit by putting good pressure on the ball, trying to speed Notre Dame up a little bit. There's the kick ahead. When you throw over the top of pressure, you're going to give up some open threes. Off the release, Hub thought that was going down. Save on the baseline. And the errant pass from Durham ends up with Beverly. But Apprentice Hub continues with the trajectory with which he started this game, 18 points. He's on pace to set a new career high, which he tied on Saturday at the Carrier Dome with 22. Pat Andre just can't get a shot to drop. That was a terrific player at Notre Dame. Played for the great David Phelps. And is here today. Not some of the family from New Jersey. Andre, though, is 0 for 5. All those attempts coming from 3. And he's an AAU teammate of TJ Gibbs from Notre Dame. Both guys from New Jersey played with the New Jersey Playas. That's from E-L-A-Y-A-Z for a few years. The great Jimmy Sapp has an incredible grassroots basketball program. Spent three years. And Andre Atley, I had a terrific year. Graduated, and now he's a grad transfer. And so the... Mom and dad were both athletes at Notre Dame. His dad, Tim, as you mentioned, played for Coach Phelps, 79 to 83. Mom, Laureen, was a swimmer there. And he would go to basketball camp there every year. He did break away from the family, though, by not going to Notre Dame. Dad now is an international traveler, businessman. But how about this? Dad was one of 12 kids. There are six kids now, and even though his dad travels back and forth to Tokyo, he said he would be there for as many sporting events as he could and even for plays as well. At one time, 
flying from Tokyo back home to New Jersey to see a school play and then getting on a plane going right back to the airport and flying back to Japan. That's great parenting right there. And there's his brother, obviously Tim Jr. and his dad. His dad was a very good player, worked in the NBA for a while, five years. He's an international businessman and uh, had a chance to visit with him beforehand. Uh, back in the day, there was a camp with a five-star basketball camp, which was basically the precursor to grassroots basketball. And uh, his dad was a terrific player. And that is a huge basket for NC State and Braxton Beverly. Now they got to make something happen defensively. They've got to find a way to disrupt the rhythm of this game for Notre Dame. Durham rejected by Bates. Soaring in for the right-handed rejection. Leading shot blocker in the ACC right there. Good job, good alertness by Bates and good timing. Big part of Watch shot blocking is time. Watch right there. A little skip. Beverly down. Shot ready. Hands ready. Big time shot. Goodwin with the drive, and as he hits the deck, gets two. The lead for Notre Dame is 10. Four minutes into the second half. Thunderbird playing with three fouls. The drop off for Bates, who rises to stuff it through. I like the pace of that for NC State right there. Coming out in transition, attacking, getting the ball to Thunderbird. Terrific pass. And now trying to speed up Notre Dame a little bit. You gotta guard the basketball. Seth, those last couple drives are just shades of Amir Sims driving to the basket again. Straight line drive. You cannot give up straight line drives. You've got to keep that ball in front on your closeout and make that offensive player go through your chest. Andre's pass was tipped. Hub ahead of the pack. An easy transition bucket. First half to second half, the Wolfpack have not been able to slow the Irish down. The floor balance. The floor balance is shot selection, because your defensive transition is connected to your shot selection, and then just understanding floor balance and effort. Thunderbird with a size mismatch, and the foul is on Goodwin, his third. Wolfpack trying to make a comeback here at home in game number four of the ACC. Oh That's, my goodness. I'm gonna frame that and hang that at home. That'll be your avatar. That'll I, be got, my, I got a flag. That'll be my downfall. That was classic. He is Seth Greenberg. I am reality are my cousins, for better or for worse. And we've got Notre Dame and NC State. Five minutes gone in the second half, and so far it's been still Notre Dame's game. NC State trying to extend their defense a little bit. They got to extend their effort. They've got to find a way to impact this game defensively, trying to get some easy baskets ahead of the defense. And they better guard the basket. I don't think we're going to see Markel Johnson again. I, I just, he had no burst. Uh, it's unfortunate with CJ Bryce out there, leading scorer, they're leading rebounder. We're talking about the two best players for this NC State team that are not able to play right now. And you're losing an average with those two on the bench. Johnson, 13 points, team leader with seven assists, and Bryce at 16 points. Almost 40 points combined between those two players on average. 40 points in experience. A senior and a fifth year senior. CJ Price, remember, he started at UNC Wilmington with Kevin Keats. He understands the DNA, he understands the identity, he understands the culture of Marco Johnson. Big play, a chance for a five point play right here. Called on John Moody. Going up for the block there, and it's back to back fouls on Moody. In disbelief at the call there from Burt Smith. Thunderbird's a guy that can take over a game in a lot of ways. He can take over a game by protecting the rim. He can take over a game by getting to the offensive glass and finishing around the basket. The energy in this building needs to change. They need to extend their defense, and then in the half court, when they get into the half court, they've got to guard the basket, keep it in front, force Notre Dame to shoot a contested shot so they can get out in transition. Thunderbird, last three games, he's made almost Three out of every four shot attempts. His field goal percentage would lead the ACC, but you need to have five field goals a game, and he's at four and a half coming in. And this is the way Kevin Keats wants to play. Now a little more aggressive with that pressure. Wyszewski gets the open look, doesn't hit. Mooney, a rare one-handed rebound. The kick out for Gibbs. Another offensive board. Lyshevsky fighting Thunderbird. 
And the foul's going to be called there on Devin Daniels. It looked like a clean strip in live action. The interesting thing is, though, that possession was in NC State's favor because they sped Notre Dame up. Let's look at this play right here. Is this a foul on 24 1? I guess it was. Great back tap right there by the show. And that's what I'm talking about. He's not making shots right now, but he's keeping the ball alive. And Lashewski's called for the offensive foul. Kevin Keats is going to get a warning right here. He's outside the box. It's my most hated unit in college basketball. Well, should coaches just be allowed to roam anywhere? No, they shouldn't be allowed to roam anywhere. Like, to me, I think you're, if you're coaching your team, you should be able to extend past the box. If you're absolutely having a conversation with the official regarding a play, then it needs to be enforced. I think it's intent. The intent is to make sure the official, the coach, is coaching his team and basically leaves the officials alone. Too many times, it's called the wrong way. Now an offensive foul called on Daniels. They get a little chippy right now. That's a no crowd right there. Martin, it was on Bates, not Daniels, for the screen. Wyszewski tees it up. Notre Dame's lead is eight. Mooney's got the rebound, quick outlet. Notre Dame with a five on three advantage. Mooney calling for it, short corner, drops it off. The easiest layup of the season for Goodwin. And now Manny Bates is down under the basket at the opposite end of the floor. The freshman big man for NC State. Bates attacking the glass. Goes down holding that left knee, and a guy who has, because of shoulder surgeries, missed a lot of time, redshirt and gear, and missing out on his senior year of high school. This is a team that's running out of players. It looked like a cramp to me. And that's the official word from the school as well, as we see him getting stretched out just short of the tunnel. This was a year coming in where Kevin Keats felt like he'd really be able to implement the up-tempo, super up-tempo pressure style he wanted to play. And with attrition being what it is, injury hasn't been able to go exactly full throttle like he'd want. Danny Dixon the rebound, and Johnson hits from straight away. The pack has been nibbling at this lead. 53-46. Look for Notre Dame to try to get something in the paint right now. Shot clock is at five. A Lyshevsky three at the buzzer as the shot clock expired. Big time shot by Lushevsky. Great dribble penetration and poise by TJ Gibbs. Get a paint touch. You've got to defend the ball side corner. Lushevsky knocks down the Haitian offense. Notre Dame shooting 50%, 6 of 12 from 3 tonight. And it's better than what their average has been as of late. Helms has the answer for NC State. Markel Johnson, the leading scorer for the Wolf Pack with 16. Prentice Hub at the top of the pack for Notre Dame with 20. Cross court, Goodwin lines it up and around and out. Both teams fighting for their second ACC victory of the year. One and two for each squad. They've stayed in that 2-3 zone, just trying to keep the ball in front, keep the ball out of the lane, contest the shot, and rebound the basketball. 
They're just trying to right now the tempo of the game a little bit by the change of the defense. Does it help them to guard Thunderberg as well? Well, keep, it keeps him in the middle of the zone, but it cannot get back in this game. These are straight line drives that you just got to keep the ball. They're melt, what I call melting on ball screens, melting on drives. When that guy starts to drive the ball, you've got to put that ball handle right on your chest to keep it in front. You can't melt on the ball. Oh. Beverly's miss, rebounded by Dixon. Here's Thunderberg spinning and scoring. Danny Dixon there in the post. It's only the sixth game he's played in this year. And this is their 15th game as Bates gets ready to come back in and take Dixon out of the next whistle. From 15 feet, it's Moody. Watch the quick drag, triple C Johnson can get in the lane. It's 58-53 as NC State tries to claw back for a lead. The last time they were in front, it was 10 to seven. A five point game, 9-29 to play. I can coach. And what a day for Jeff Capel getting a two year contract extension as well. The deal now going through 2026-27, helping turn around that program since his arrival last year. My cousin Seth Greenberg, a five-point game as NC State has trailed for most of it. What do the Wolfpack need to do to come back and get their second ACC win? They've got to keep the ball in front, eliminate straight line drives. They've got to contest shots and then rebound the basketball. If they can play ahead of the defense and in transition, that's an advantage, NC State. See if they can slow down the three-point shooting for Notre Dame as well. The Irish at 46% on the evening. Hub just two points shy of his career high. This is Moody from way deep. Had to let it go with just three on the shot clock. Terrific possession right there. Keeping the ball in front, keeping the ball out of the lane, and contesting the shot. Seth, you know what's really amazing right now for Notre Dame? They played one bench player. He's got three points. Nate Shusky, the three made in the corner. He's the first three. NC State right now, they've got to find a way to get dribble penetration. They cannot settle against this zone. Look from the screen the zone, get the ball in the middle of the zone, but they cannot settle for just a step in three on the first side. The Irish do go a little bit deeper, but not much. They've got Nick Jogo. They only played 54 seconds against Syracuse on Saturday and a walk-on Elijah Morgan, freshman out of New Orleans. And so far, six guys in, and the lead remains at five. Right now, Notre Dame's got a little bit stagnant. The flow of their offense has been eliminated. They need to build the ball. They need to get the ball off the bounce a little bit. Another rejection by Bates. Hitting his season average with eight minutes to go. One dream is better when they're moving the ball, cutting, and then driving it off ball reversal. They're trying to drive it on the first side too much. We weren't sure if we'd see Markel Johnson return after he went to the locker room right before halftime. But he's got 16. Ellums with a strong take. Bates goes to the deck as he loses the ball. Gibbs just tips it forward for Hub, and he ties his career high with 22. So back-to-back -back games for Prentice Hub, where he scored 22 points. It's always been really good for Notre Dame. They're keeping the ball in front. These screens, they've done a good job of walling up on those drives, and they're finishing the possessions with a rebound. Thunderbird got it, went back up with it, still fighting. And he's going to the free throw line. A contentious back over the weekend. The quote from him was, it's the least gifted team I've ever coached in the time I've been back here. I was absolutely shocked that he said that. He does not have to say that. Because everyone else knows that this is the least talented North Carolina team that we've seen in the last decade. So for Roy Williams to say that kind of, he said, well, Here's the question for you. Roy, you're responsible for recruiting and bringing these players into the program. I understand Cole Anthony's been out, but there's a bigger issue. 
You have no depth. You don't have a backup point guard. Yes, you've had injuries. For me, Roy, let someone else say that. We're seeing it. We understand it. We've all been through it with injuries. He needs to let someone else say that. I was shocked. You lose credibility in your locker room. You lose credibility with parents. You lose credibility in terms of recruiting. And then Cole Anthony. If you're Cole Anthony and you hear that, does that get you very excited about coming back and playing this year? Probably not. Tell you what, Florida State's the real deal, though. They are. They've won 13 of 14. They lost to Indiana ever since their season opening loss at Pitt. But I think they'll look back on and maybe scratch their head a little bit when the season's over. But they've got 10 players averaging at least 10 minutes a game. Them and Duke are as deep as anybody in this league. It, the thing about they lose two NBA players. And Trent Forrest, and Purcell, and MJ Walker, Patrick Williams, and elite young talented 6'9 freshman. They are the real deal. They're a second weekend potential for the team. Beverly just off on a three that would have made it a two-point game, but Thunderbird keeps it alive. Florida State is Rodney Dangerfield of the ACC. Beverly again! And it's 60 to 58. NC State fighting for some respect right here. NC State basically imposing a little bit of their will on the game. They've extended their defense. Beverly making those shots early. Now is paying dividends. Good win off the bottom of the backboard and out of bounds. Braxton Beverly is so important to this basketball team, but when you get triple penetration, you get step-in threes. Beverly buries that three. That baseline jumper in the first half, that three right there was a byproduct of that made shot. Beverly feeling better about himself, and then all of a sudden you have energy on the other end of the floor. Well, distributed scoring for the Wolfpack tonight. 16 for Markel Johnson, 10 for Beverly, and 12 apiece for Thunderbird and Hellos. Ted Valentine comes over for an embrace with Markel Johnson, who gets called for his first foul. Tipped by Daniels. Stays with Notre Dame. Good hands by Coach Keats. Coach Keats catching with two hands. One hand catch is not very good. <laughs> you're going to press, you've got to meet the ball, and you've got to catch it with two hands. 17 on the clock. Let's see what Notre Dame tries to do. I would expect them to attack the paint. They need to attack the paint on some type of flat ball screen. Gibbs sends it wide. Three was halfway down for Hub. NC State has a chance to take the lead here for the first time since three and a half minutes had ticked off the clock. Thunderbird thunders his way to the basket and will stroll to the charity strike. Tomorrow, a great Pac-12 game, two top 25 teams. Number nine, Oregon, with seniority leading the way and a very youthful but exuberant Arizona squad. They square off in Eugene, nine Eastern, six Pacific, on ESPN and ESPN. Arizona's three freshmen is dynamic as any three freshmen in college basketball. Oregon, to me, is as talented as any team. Shakur Houston must be healthy because he gets some extra possessions on the glass. Finally, Dante could be a difference for the freshman now eligible. Seth, we just saw John Mooney go to the bench. Four fouls, five and a half to go. Tie game. How long can they afford to sit in? Under the four-minute mark. What NC State's done right now is only the tap of the game. They've sped up all today. There's not a good flow to their offense. Really relying on dribbling the basketball. There's another turnover potentially for the freedom and the flow of the offense of Notre Dame right now. Is the ball is getting stuck. They're pounding it too much. That's not Notre Dame basketball. Notre Dame basketball is make the next pass, cut hard, reverse the basketball, then attack. Well, you said the timeout under four minutes. Mooney came back in about 30 seconds of real time later. Senior, I very trust him. Four fouls for Mooney, who's got 13 boards today, two points shy of his ninth straight double-double. Johnson back rims it, Bates knocks it into the arms of Gibbs. 
Ty Curry going back to the man-to-man -man right that possession. They're running too much set offense right now, Notre Dame. Notre Dame's best when they're running their motion, getting the ball reversed, opening up the floor, and making NC State the guard more of the floor. Remember Kevin Keats said to us before the game, he wanted to get up and under and make Notre Dame drivers. He's run them off the three-point line and did a good job with that. Beverly for the lead. Notre Dame looking to run where they got a good number of points early on. And now there's a whistle as Beverly has come up limping right in front of the NC State bench. Left ankle appears to be the problem there for Beverly. So far today, we've seen Markel Johnson right before the half go to the locker room. Manny Bates had a cramp in his left leg, and Beverly is the latest among the wounded for NC State. Along with C.J. Price, their leading scorer out for a third straight game with concussion symptoms. Inside for Mooney, a flick of the wrist, and the lead is back to Notre Dame. Really nice job of getting that ball in this quickly. Mooney gets a post up, nice finish. Another foul stops the clock. Another double-double for John Mooney. Will it be a win for Notre Dame? zeros at the end of it. What was the first deal? It was a... Uh, Five years to start, something, something big, but Heather Like has seen that she's got a great basketball coach and says, we want people to know he's here for the long term, including the recruits. They've invested in facilities. They've been in their locker room, in their lounge area. Brick by it. brick. Brick by brick. They've brought energy back to the program. They're winning games. And, you know, get a contract extension, and you beat North Carolina. we got a tie game right here. Yeah, 62 all, and Notre Dame has had trouble putting it in the basket. They've had trouble putting it in the basket. Better to draw defensive transition by NC State. The flow of the offense right now, the pressure of NC State is pushing Notre Dame out. Mooney against Thunderbird. And it's Mooney who comes away with the lead taking bucket. Really good execution. Getting Mooney on the block and back to back possession. Johnson going to work on Hub. Space cleared by Bates to tie the game at 64. Both teams going to the best player. On this end, Mooney gets a touch and finishes. Markel Johnson gets downhill, gets to the rim. Good win to Mooney. And with Johnson underneath the basket, an easy two for Mooney. Full timeout taken here by Notre Dame as they're up 66. 64. That's a play that NC State worked on in their walkthrough. It's just a horn set. There's a, a foul at the foul line extended, foul line extended on either side. They came off John Mooney. He rolls. They lifted Durham. They were able to get the ball reversed and knock it right into the post. Watch right here. Hub's going to come off of Mooney. He's going to roll the basket. Leshevsky lifts. No rotation. He gets right to the low block and finishes. It's a simple. Horns action. You got two up post players. You can look with Shevsky because he can shoot the three. You got to stay home. The weak side defender has got to rotate over and give help. Terrific execution by Notre Dame. Tonight, after the NBA on ESPN, stick around for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. They'll be joined by Tim Legler to break down Luka Doncic's night. And taking a look back to the 1987 divisional round for one of the biggest playoff upsets in NFL history. And your favorite feature is back. Where in the world isn't SVP? Bald men everywhere with glasses. Beware, you're on alert. He was at Maryland the other day in a huge win against Ohio State. And that Maryland team, if they can make threes, they made eight in the first half the other day. They are really going to be a tough out because they can really defend and they've got versatility in their lineup. But it's interesting to see what Kevin Keats does coming out of this timeout right here. You would think they're going to try to punch this thing inside or get some type of high ball screen and drill penetration. Johnson with the rock, Beverly. Joined by Funderburk, Bates, and Helms on the floor for the Wolfpack. Johnson, an off-balance floater. It's beautiful, 66 off. We said before the game, Johnson needed to step up and take ownership in this game, and he has in the last four minutes. 22 for Markel Johnson.
Mooney works from the block. They got the mismatch they wanted. Mooney a little bit hesitant, trying to work to the middle. We're going to see ball screens and dribble penetration now. Bates gets the rebound. Mooney tries to steal it away. Bates falls on the floor for it, and the foul is on Notre Dame. Hub in the vicinity as well as Gibbs, and that's one of the things the officials are instructed to do. Fouls on Gibbs is when players are diving for a loose ball. You cannot jump on top of another player. It's a foul. Really good reflection right here. I'm not sure if he jumped or got tripped or lost control, but great job. You see how important this game is. We talked about the start of the game. Both teams are one and two. Kevin Keats, you got to basically hold home, hold serve. For Mike Ray, a chance to get a road win, which is so valuable in this league right now, especially this league has great balance right now. Manny Bates just 10 of 18 at the free throw line, and he comes up empty. A whistle from Ted Valentine. It's a foul. Goes on Funderburk for an elbow. So that's his four. So both big men, Funderburk for NC State and Mooney for Notre Dame, have four fouls with two minutes to go. The ball's got to be in Marco Johnson's hands on this end of the floor for NC State. Braxton Beverly's got to play off penetration and closeouts, and they got to have those two bigs in position to offensive rebound the basketball. So Mooney goes to the free throw line after you saw Bates at 56%. Mooney is 55% from the line. Spacing will be key, opening up the floor for Markel Johnson. The ball screen and the kick out for Beverly. Hub right on top of it. Funderburk on Mooney, who's got four fouls, and now he's got five. The day is over for John Mooney. Fourteen points, fourteen rebounds. His ninth straight double-double, twelfth of the year. But he comes off the floor at the time when they need him the most. They need him the most because the last few plays start trembling through him. Great job of Kevin Keats playing at Mooney. And a good job of Funberg not settling, but getting to the middle of the floor. When you're a low post player, especially a righty, you want to get to the left block and work to the middle, attack the chest of the defender. Really good job of Kevin Keats coaching, making Mooney have to defend the low block. The irony as Mooney fouls out, as Funderburk had two fouls in the first half and only played four and a half minutes. His first puts NC State in front. So where does Notre Dame go for scoring right now? Prentice Hubbard has to make a play. Gibbs needs to make a play. Those are the two guys that everyone else needs to play off of their penetration, but they've got to move the ball. You can't attack on the first time. This is the first NC State lead since it was 10 to 7, way back when in the first half. Timeout Wolfpack. NC State has been absolutely terrific in the last 10 minutes of the game. They've been the aggressor. They've made Notre Dame respond to them. Ball movement's been crisp. Obviously, Helms knocked down that big three. Once you make a shot, you get a little energy. They did a good job getting to the offensive glass, getting extra possession. Thunderbird's been good coming up the glass. That's really, really important. And then when your best player's making plays, Markel Johnson getting in the lane, drawing second defenders. Beverly knocks down this big three. NC State's best when they're attacking on the bounce. The ball must be in Markel Johnson's hand down the stretch. So NC State has outscored the Irish by 12 over the last 10 minutes. John Mooney goes to the bench. It'll be interesting to see how NC State works offensively if they go back inside next time they've got the ball. First half, Notre Dame stepping threes, open threes. 
NC State didn't disrupt the flow of the offense. They got out in transition. Kevin Keats said, pressure the ball, push them out, make them drivers. They've done that in the second half. Hub takes the high screen, looking for Durham on the roll. It's intercepted by Helms. They stayed with Hub. Shrink the court on the weak side. Great job right there defensively. Much better ball screen defense. They go in some zone. I still think they'll try to screen the top of the zone again. Markel Johnson in the paint. With three to shoot, Johnson flips it up and in. The lead is four with under a minute to go. And a foul on the Wolfpack. Screen at the top of the zone. Look at Marco Johnson right there. That's a split. He gets in the lane. He's on balance. Terrific finish. We started the game saying, Markel Johnson, you got to take ownership in this game right here. Last year, C.J. Bryce did it with 23 points. The second half, Markel Johnson has taken over this game, getting in the paint. It's both 70 68. A second ACC win of the season hangs in the balance. Both teams have started one and two in conference play. A little surprise that Gibbs is in on Markel Johnson. A little bigger defender to contest him a little bit. They could end up going flat with four in the baseline, giving Markel Johnson room to play. Great burst. And it's Johnson to the basket again. Thunderbird. Fighting for the rebound, but a foul on the take by Johnson. So loud you can't hear the whistle from about 30 feet away. What does Kevin Keats decide to do? Instead of going with a flat ball screen and bringing another defender to the basketball, he goes four on the baseline, opens up the floor, and Markel Johnson changes speed, gets downhill, and makes a play. Foul was on Leszewski for Notre Dame, his third. Kevin Ted. Keats with some terrific decisions down the stretch. The, the decision to attack Mooney on the block, and then the decision to put the ball in Markel Johnson's hands. And notice there's four offensive players on the baseline. It opens up the lane. And this dude has gotten downhill the last 10 minutes of this game. The blocking foul on Leszewski, the secondary defender who failed to eclipse the semicircle under the basket. So Johnson to the line. He has shot 35% from the free throw line his last four games. You'd never know it after that. And I think he shoot 43 for the season. He is. Came in 19 of 40. So here they go, a four-point game. The Irish were in the opposite position over the weekend against Syracuse. Trying to hold off the comeback. Goodwin shot rims out. And a foul, sending Johnson to the line again with 11 seconds to play. Victory in sight. by NC State and it started on the defensive end it started by them extending their defense speeding Notre Dame up Notre Dame kind of settled a little bit offensively and then that dude right there on the free throw line he took over the game off the bounce empowering his team a corner three from Leszewski no good tipped up and out by Durham over the weekend NC State lost to Clemson they trailed the entire game. Today they have trailed for all but three minutes. But their surge coming at the most important time as the Wolfpack 
going to come from behind win. They improved to 11 and 4, 2 and 2 in conference. The Irish 10 and 5 and 1 and 3 to the bottom of the ACC. This was a huge win for NC State. This league, you've got to protect your home court. But more importantly, it's not that they won, but how they won. Their resiliency, their toughness, their commitment to playing NC State basketball. And Markel Johnson has absolutely great.